Hey y'all, welcome back to Goalpost Barbecue and Cooking. If it's Goalpost, it's good. I'm Robert Weathers, and today we're gonna make perhaps one of the greatest, not perhaps, definitely one of the greatest bites of barbecue that you can make. And the great news is, is that this is one of the more simple bites of barbecue that you can make, especially the way that we're gonna do it. We are gonna make pork belly burnt ends. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy here, we're gonna cut him up into about one inch cubes. We're gonna to toss them in a rub, put them out on the smoker, get them, uh, get them nice and cooked and soft. Then we're gonna tenderize them in some sauce. Then we're gonna glaze them and they'll be ready to go. You're gonna love it and I'm happy to have you here. Thanks so much for watching. Y'all stick around. As to ingredients here today, we're gonna to keep it really simple. We've got our pork belly here, we've got uh, a rub, a barbecue rub, you can use whichever one you like. As you can see, I'm using the Fire and Smoke Society Pork Perfect. You're gonna need a sauce, you're gonna need uh, a little bit of hot sauce, you're gonna need some brown sugar, and we might throw uh, one or two things else in there. We'll see how we're feeling here today. As you can see, I've already cut down part of the pork belly here, and all I'm doing is cutting these into little one inch cubes like I made mention just a little, little while ago. So the simplest thing to do here is to just sort of portion out what you think looks good, like so. And then all you're gonna do is cut them into pretty large pieces here. Um, the bacon, uh, or rather the belly here is gonna, uh, is gonna shrink because of the heat, you know, just like it does in a frying pan. So go ahead and make yourself some pretty large pieces. And if they're not all exactly the same size, will be okay. Just like so. So one, so those will be some pretty big bites there, but they're gonna be good. Beautiful, so we got our pork belly cut up into cubes here. Um, now, if you want, you can definitely put these out on a tray, uh, on a sheet pan or whatever, and sprinkle your rub over and uh, do it that way. I have found that this is the easiest way to do it, just like your coat and wings and sauce. So this is a new <laughs> this is a new bottle. So we're gonna have to really get it on there. And don't be afraid to really get this on there. Even though this looks like a lot, I'm probably gonna actually end up needing more in there. But then you just take these guys and <laughs> toss them around. There you go. Might take a little cajoling there. Whoop, caught him. All right, so you can probably see, oh, here, uh, one second. There we go, that's probably better, isn't it? You can probably see uh, that those are coated, but we got some issues with like some of these, right, that have stuck together. Nothing going on there, so. That's all right, so you can go in there and just kind of pick around, pick apart a couple of those ones that are stuck together and add some more in. I really wouldn't be shy about it. Get them to a nice color. There we go. And toss around some more. All finished, all laid out. Uh, there's room in between each one of these. That's really important for us so that we can get smoke uh, in between them and get smoke everywhere on the individual bites. Uh, I have another rack that has a little bit fewer on here, but these guys are gonna be the ones that we're gonna be following here. They're gonna be on my top rack, uh, which is where I regulate my temperature from. So we're gonna get these guys out onto the smoker. Looks like we are sitting at about 240 out there. Gonna raise the temperature just a little bit uh, to 250 and we're gonna get these guys into the smoke. Follow me. Now, before y'all judge me for all the smoke, <laughs> I opened this thing up to put on our buddies here a minute ago, um, and about a thousand trucks went by, so I decided that I would do a retake here. Um, we were at about 2, 
uh, we were at about 250. This is reading almost at 250 here again, and my great thermometer is reading at 228. I'm happy with that. This smoke will be okay uh, once everything settles out in there. So it's gonna be real smoky. Get ready. Whoop. Oh. Once again, it'll be okay. We're just gonna get these guys settled in right over here. We might need to move our thermometer slightly. Yeah, you're gonna be too hot. Ouch, yeah. So that's okay. I'll put this glove on backwards. Move it down just a little bit. There we go. Not too bad. That'll do. Alrighty. So we've got these guys on. They are rolling. I think all we're going to do now is just let them ride. I don't know if you can see, but I put the second rate uh, rack down there. Um, and they'll be okay down there, obviously. Let me go ahead and just slide the guys in just a little bit more. Got a full water pan on this baby. Uh, oh, this is hickory, by the way, that we're doing this over. Um, if you could see my eyes, you'd see they were really red because hickory is so strong on the eyes. Anyways, uh, so last minute adjustments here to make sure that there's room between these guys or as much room as we can we can muster for them. There we go. All right. I think we are ready to let these go. Probably about three hours, maybe a little bit more, and we'll check on them in a little bit. We are an hour into this cook. These guys are rolling a little hot, about 280 or so. So we're going to pull this back a little on the vents here in a second. But let's take a look and see what we got. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Looky there. Got some good... That color looks great on these guys. They're clearly uh, cooking along nicely. You can see that glimmer on there. Uh, I don't know if you can see Knox. There he is. He's really interested in what's happening over here. These guys look great. All right. We still got probably two hours left on these, so we're going to leave them alone. The ones down there look good. You know, they're getting drips of bacon grease down there, too, or pig, uh, pork belly grease. So these look great. Going to cover these back up. Going to close the dampers on the bottom just a little bit to reduce the heat slightly. And we'll check back in another hour. We are on hour two of these burn-ins, these pork belly burn-ins here. We're sitting right at 275 in the dome and 272 down at the grate. So let's open her up and take a look. Ooh, baby. Yes. These guys are coming along. Oh yeah, that, that fat up top there is real soft. Those are getting there for sure. These are, oh yeah. Whew, they're hot of course, but that's okay. They are getting done. So y'all, I think that we're gonna probably check on these in maybe half an hour or so um, because they are, they're real close. Well, not real, real close, but they're getting there. Um, after we finish with this part of the cook, we're gonna put them into a, uh, into a braise uh, let them tenderize in a pan for a while. You can see how much these guys have shrunk up here. Uh, even some of these really big ones, like the one that's uh, the one that was down here or up here, uh, took up this whole spot here. But it's really tightened up. So, yeah, these guys are looking great, and that has set on there real nice. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. Yeah. All right, guys. Excited for these and how they're going to turn out. Going to give them a little bit more time here just to finish up rendering. Um, and then we're going to tenderize them in a braise. Awesome. Excited for these. Hour number three. It is 3.03 .03 p.m. Put these on at noon. Sitting here right at 2.50 in the dome. 2.51 on the grate, which is wonderful. The smoke looks good. It smells heavenly. Let's take a look at these guys. Oh, Yes, I think we are good. Oh yeah, soft. Any, all this fat on here is just, look at this guy. Oh yeah, these guys are ready to come off. Good. So 
What we're going to do is we're going to take these guys off of here. I bet those ones down there are in good shape too. Take them inside and get them ready to braise. Let's head inside. I took the bites off of the grates. Uh, this is both grates with maybe a couple missing for taste testing. Uh, Knox and I enjoyed them. We're going to add in here some brown sugar, some honey, and I've got a little extra butter here as well. And I think I'm going to add a little something else here in just one second. But first, let's get this brown sugar on here. This should be an interesting experiment because this brown sugar got, got a hole in its bag and it's extra dry. So it doesn't have the extra in it that it normally does the wetness. Okay, so there's that. And we're going to add in our honey. And I don't have any amounts for you here. Just put a fair amount in. I don't know. That's probably half a cup, maybe third of a cup and then a little extra butter here that I've cubed up you can sprinkle it around it's all gonna go to the bottom here anyway don't get too picky with it and I think I am gonna add a little extra something I was gonna we're gonna put this in the sauce or the uh, uh, glaze at the end but hang on it's over here in the closet a little bit of one of my favorite ingredients Got old molasses. I don't know. Oops, my hand's got butter on now. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if you ever use molasses, but if you don't, I encourage you to buy some and give it a try. Put it into your sweet things. You can put it into oatmeal. Uh, you can put it into, people put it into cookies, of course. It's, I used to think for whatever reason that it had a really like bitter taste to it, but it doesn't. It's mildly, mildly sweet. Gives things a good dark color. We're ready to go. We're going to throw some foil over the top of this and get this right back out onto the smoker. Okay, guys, these are ready to go. Back on. Looks like we're sitting right about 260. That's good for me. Make sure these are nice and tight. It's going to be probably an hour or so, maybe a little bit longer before these are ready to come off. Ooh, I'm excited. It's a little cold out here, so. <laughs> All right, let's get these guys back on. We'll check in in a little more than an hour or so. Uh, yeah, an hour, I guess. Hey, we are at 4.30, so we've been on for about an hour here. Uh, just under 2.50, we're at about 2.42, 2.45 here in the dome. So let's open these guys up take a look and just see how they're doing right. oh, oh, oh. 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 There we go. try not to rip the foil in case I need to put it back on but you know how that goes smells promising all right let's get a look Ooh, mommy. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, y'all. These things are soft. Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure those... I Ooh. I don't think those need to go any farther. So let's take these guys inside, get them in a braise. We're going to put them back out here and get them glazed up. We've got to make that glaze first. It's going to be super easy. Uh -huh. And then we're going to have some delicious pork meat candy. Awesome. Let's go. Back inside, I have transferred these out of the pan they were in into a new pan. Uh, minus a couple because, spoiler alert guys, these are super good just like they are. But we're about to turn this up even further. I gotta say, that addition of molasses into these provided some unexpected depth of flavor. I'd definitely do that again. Um, but now let's sweeten and heat things up a little bit. We're going to start with something that might be a little unexpected here. We're going to put in some grape jelly into this. This, I admit fully to you, is something I've not done before, but it's an idea that I've got now. Now, the first thing we're going to do is make this grape jelly a little more uh, 
little more pliable is by heating it up. So I'm gonna throw this in the microwave real fast just to loosen it up and we'll be right back. Our couple scoops of jelly are out of the fridge and you can see how that's done for us there. I think that's gonna be good right there. If we need any more, we can always, always add it. The base on this is gonna be barbecue sauce. This is an Aldi version of Sweet Baby Ray's. It tastes exactly the same so far as I am concerned. And I'm happy to use it here. Bloop. Get a good oh, wow, wow. half cup in there. Now, if you've ever gone to a church, uh, a church potluck or, you know, gathering in the fellowship hall, this grape jelly and barbecue sauce combo right here is what was in those meatballs that came in the crock pot. It's a very familiar, very familiar uh, flavor. Wow. <laughs> but we're going to put some more in there. Let's put a little heat and even a little bit of butter flavor in there with some red hot wing sauce. I'm using the wing sauce just because this is the Franks that I have here in the house, but you can use the hot sauce that you like. I happen to really like that sauce a lot. And I do use it on wings with a little bit of honey in there. Speaking of honey, let's throw some more honey in here. Good squirt. Good. Yummy. And just to keep that theme going, we're going to put just a little more molasses in too. There we go. Whoop. All right. Yummy. Mix this up here and let's give this a little bit of a taste before we put this on for the glaze. Oh, that's yummy. That's good. I'm going to use a little bit of tang. So I'm going to reach over here and grab my Oop. I'm looking at bottom of my sink right now. Apple cider vinegar. Just a touch. Just a touch more tang. Not much. And you don't want to get too loose anyway. Oh, I think that's good. I think that's real good. All right, throw all this stuff back up under my sink. Very entertaining right now, I know. So, we're just gonna glaze, y'all. Pour it on. Get it in there. There we go. Don't be shy about it neither, because you're about to toss these guys around. Really, really beautiful. Okay, so I'm gonna take my trusty little silicone spatula here. Now, if you use gloves when you uh, when you cook, feel free to get in here with your hands. If you don't use gloves when you cook, feel free to get in here with your hands. Um, I'm just gonna have to open a sliding door here in a second. And Caitlin is upstairs working on something, so she can't come help me do it. So, I'm toss these guys around here get everything covered up here. You can see they're falling apart there. I think that's a good sign for us. Oh y'all they smell like delicious. <laughs> oh man. Oh well what do you know. Unfortunately there's a casualty. Oh man. Oh that's going to be super once these are tacked up, and it's not going to be long either. I just picked it up off the counter. You bet I did. Mm. Oh, man. Okay. Guys, these are going back on the smoker. Still at 250, 275. It ain't going to be long. Maybe 10 or so minutes, and then we're going to have some delicious pork belly burn-ins. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. It's been 15 minutes since we put these guys on the glaze. Um, I gave them a little extra time because I left the dome off too long while I was trying to take a picture of the uh, of the unfinished product earlier. 
but it is time, I think, for us to take a look. Let's take a second. A peek here. A second, but take a peek here. Look at these guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's starting to tack up pretty nice. Y'all, I think our pork belly burnt ends are ready to come off and go in for a final taste. Ooh, can't wait. Let's get inside. Oh, I'm ready for this. <laughs> Nox just came in here. I'm looking for this too. Look at this guy. Here we go. Mm. Oh. Y'all, that is transcendent. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, let me get another one of these things. Oh, they're they're perfectly tender, perfectly fatty, perfectly uh, sweet and tacky and a little teeny bit tangy and a little teeny bit heat. Not much heat at all, really, but it's there. Uh, I think someone claw themselves out of the grave for that. Holy cow, that's so good. Um, and just so easy, right? We, uh, we cook till soft, then braise, then glaze. That's everything that we did there with some pretty basic ingredients. And even some of the stuff that's in here, I just sort of added in on a whim, like the grape jelly. I thought it might be a good addition. So you can put in there something uh, for your glaze, as simple as just a barbecue sauce. I think that would work out just fine. I really hope you give these a try. Um, just so you know, I get the majority of my meat for barbecuing these days at Costco. That's really worked out well for me. I'm really happy with the quality of the product that I'm getting from their uh, from their selection. And also, I'm really happy with their prices. If you're like me here in Williamsburg, like the closest thing I have to a real butcher is the counter over at Fresh Market. And they're gonna try and roll out like seven or eight dollars a pound for for brisket where you can get a whole pack of prime brisket at Costco for like two nine nine a pound. Now obviously pack of briskets are really big generally and they're gonna run you back 50 bucks but still per pound it's a great price. This pork belly I don't remember the exact weight on it but it came out to $25 for the whole thing and we only used half of it for these. The other half I'm gonna turn to some bacon for a later video. So you know give it a try if you are on the fence about maybe going to a Sam's Club or a Costco or a BJ's or something like this is worth it though. I mean, you just, you just don't taste something that is so wildly decadent as that. Even in most barbecue restaurants, I think. Thank you so much for watching, y'all. I really love spending time with you. I hope that you enjoyed watching the video. I hope you find it helpful and I hope you try this at home. If you do, let me know how it went for you in the comments. I still got some delicious pork candy, some pork belly burn ins here in my mouth because they're just so good. But hey, you know how it goes. This is a Gold Post barbecue. And if it's a Gold Post, it's good. We'll see y'all next time. Thanks for coming.